Hey guys, Jeeping Needus here. I'm going to show you how to change a fuel pump out in a 2000 Chevy Trailblazer. The reason I'm changing the pump out in mine is not because the pump is bad, but the sending unit is bad, and that is part of the fuel pump. So might as well change the whole fuel pump out if we're going to go through this really terrible process of pulling the gas tank out and changing the pump. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to relieve all the fuel pressure in the fuel system. So we have the vehicle running, and uh, if you look under your uh, hood and find your uh, your relay box here, you're going to pull this relay, and that will should kill the fuel pump here. There you go. So we just ran the system out of gas. I'll just leave the relay sitting right there. One other thing you can do if you want to be for safe is uh, disconnect your negative battery cable which if you have a stock battery should be on this side of the battery here but uh, make sure on your own make sure you disconnect the negative so you can see the check engine lights on so if the check engine lights on and your full fuel uh, gauge isn't working but your fuel pump is still pumping meaning your car is still running uh, go ahead and throw a scan gauge on it here and then you can see here that I have happen to have a code that is for the fuel pump. You can also see I have another fuel pump code uh, P0230 fuel pump primary circuit and the third code is reading exactly is that the same one there? Fuel pump primary circuit and code 4 fuel lever sensor fuel level sensor A circuit high input. So they're all fuel pump codes so hopefully when I change the fuel pump uh, out I can clear the codes and, and hopefully they don't come back. First thing we're going to do under the truck here is uh, you have this big crossbar that uh, goes right below the gas tank here. So you're just going to take a 15 millimeter socket here and you're just going to go ahead and take both sides off. Uh, I happen to live in Arizona so things are usually not rusty here but when I lived in New York I always had to take some PD blaster or WD-40 or whatever and soak the heck out of all the nuts and stuff on the bottom of the vehicle so if you have to do that go ahead and do that before you even get started so take that bar off and we'll go to the next step uh, one thing I did here is I just loosened this other bolt on the other side I'm just gonna move the bar out of the way like that just so it's just one less thing to lose you can also see on the other side I think there I left the I just put the bolt back in there just so it's easy to find I don't have to fumble around for it okay uh, I'm underneath I'm underneath the vehicle here and you can see we have all these little hoses back in here we have this one we have this one and then there's looks like there's one more back there they all have these funky clips on them uh, I'm gonna take them all off uh, the one I'm actually not gonna take off is this one what I'm gonna try to do is just unhook unhook this canister from this bracket here and see if I could just shift it over to the side and leave the hose hooked up. But I am going to disconnect these three here. Let's try again. One, two, and three back here. So um, the way you disconnect those clips is, here's the bottom of one of the clips. You can see it's got these two tabs. I think you just kind of push them out and then push it up. And you can see this is what the top of that clip would look like. So that sh that'll end up coming out like that. Go ahead and do that to all the hoses that you think need to come off and then you can uh, unclip them from from what they go to. Once again, uh, if you have the, the 07, I believe this is the canister that goes on it, I think you can just take the canister off. I think I saw in another video the canister is different and you have to actually take the hose off the, ca off the canister. To get the canister off, just take a little screwdriver and pry up under this little tab here and then you can just slide the canister off like that and now it should be free and it's not connected to the tank it's not connected to the tank anymore here you can kind of see see how I'm getting the clip off I'm putting a little tiny screwdriver in each side of the clip and then I'm taking one little screwdriver at the bottom or my down here to pry it out I can't actually film it because I can't get the camera in here while I'm doing it all right so I have the canister off and I have all these clips off these things can suck my balls they're really difficult to get off just because the position they're in not so much that they're very terrible but so once you get the clips off I actually broke this one so I'll have to go to hopefully that doorman brand has some extra clips but you just these things just pull out here 
just just work them until you get them out. You can see this is what a non-broken clip looks like when it's detached. So just work these until you get get the things out, and we'll go to the next step. There's one of those clips there. Piece of crap. Now that now that we got we have those suckers off, uh, we're gonna move to the front of the tank. And I have a four-wheel drive here, so we have this nice transfer case in the way. And uh, I can't really get to the hose at the top of the tank, but if you look right in here, mine's really nice and clean actually, and it actually has some tags hanging from it. So these two need to, we need to get the suckers off here that go into the top of the tank. And I don't know if I can get the camera in here. You see those lines right there? Those go into the top of the tank. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect. Those are the similar clips to the ones that are in the back there. So we'll we'll get those off. Actually, I'll take one off and then I'll make sure that that other one is that needs to come off too. But the one with the clip on, we're going to take off right now. Okay, you can see there's a clip right here. This is a right in front of the gas tank. Um, a lot of stuff's in the way here. Mine is a four-wheel drive, so it has a transfer case right here. But uh, you could take that clip off there that has the blue mark on it. And then you see there's another line right above it. That line runs to the front of the tank here. Oh, shoot. Alright. That's... This line right here runs to the front of the tank. I can't get the camera in here, but in front of the tank, there's another clip... clip there's another clip right behind that and uh, you just need to take that off and then you should be able to lower the tank next I think okay. I actually got I got the camera in here here's that clip right there it's right at the front of the tank so just disconnect push these little tabs out slip the clip up and you should be able to just pop this right off and be careful some gas will probably spill out on you Here's the back of the tank. Uh, you can see the filler hose goes in there. Uh, I can't see any electrical connections here. Uh, on videos I've seen for older trailblazers, it seems like you can reach in and grab a few of the connectors. I don't see them there, so we're going to go ahead and try to lower the tank a bit. And we'll just do it slowly and see if we can get to those uh, electrical connections if they're there. There's got to be a few at least. One thing we can do while we're back here, even though we didn't find those electrical connections, is we can take this hose clamp off right here. You can see there's two hose clamps on here. One is this like machined on pressed hose clamp and then this one's a traditional hose clamp and the uh, a-holes that put this together put the bolt on the top so I'm gonna have to get a ratchet and use a I think a six or seven millimeter uh, socket and I'll loosen that and then we'll be able to pull that hose off of the tank so just get you a ratchet or a wrench uh, throw it on that hose clamp and just loosen it I have it all loosened up here you can see it moves on the tank here but this metal piece of the hose is just really preventing me from putting any pressure on it that way so when we lower the tank it should stretch it a little bit and then I can probably pop it off. Next thing I'm going to do is uh, put a jack underneath the gas tank here with uh, a piece of wood. Uh, probably the whiter the better. This is about the whitest I have at my house. Also I'm going to try to get it in the middle with you know, just put a little pressure on that just to hold it in place there. And then the next thing we're going to do is take this 15 millimeter bolt off here, which is towards the front of the tank. And then we're going to take this 15 millimeter meter bolt off towards the rear of the tank. And uh, just do that slowly. Make sure your tank doesn't just fall down because we still have uh, a couple connections on the top that we need to get to. You're back? Yeah. Make sure when make sure when you're doing all this that you're if you lift your vehicle up with a jack that you put jack stands under the areas where you lifted it. Okay, both straps are out. 
There you can see one strap hanging, and here's another one. Now the tank is free. Go ahead and lower it with the jack just a tiny bit. Try to get underneath it, or try to get our hands over it and see if we can get some of those connectors out. Okay, let's just see how that works. All right, at the back of the tank again. Uh, I couldn't film it by myself, but I pulled this hose off. And if you look on top of the tank, it looks like there's enough slack to go ahead and let, let it down. There's some uh, connections in there that need to be taken off. Uh, we will go ahead and uh, get those off once we get the tank to the ground, which it's almost down already. Go ahead and lower the tank if you can. Try to do it nice and gentle like. That's fine, we can make sure make sure that there's no tension on any of these wires, that there is enough slack back here. And then we'll see what's making it. I think the gas just poured to the back, that's why it's leaning back like that. So let's lower it and we'll get those connectors off. Alright, we still, we still have a little bit of slack here, but not very much. The first connector you want to get off is this one here. You just pull that little tab up right there and it, that one actually pops right out. The next connector is, has this little tab job on it. You just lift up on the front and push it back. Mine is so brittle it just snapped as soon as I touched it. I don't know why, but take a screwdriver and pop that little tab out. Screwdriver. Pop that up. Pull that out. Alright, if you decide you're going to use a vacuum on this, which I, after the fact I think it wasn't the best idea because vacuum cleaners make a lot of static electricity. Uh, if you do, I would say leave all these hoses connected just to minimize the chance that there's any fuel right here. Uh, I did stop vacuuming it and I just kind of wiped it off. Uh, the next step you're going to want to do is to get this ring off. And uh, punch a brass punch not a steel punch don't use steel on steel and then just give it there you go give it a couple whacks and there you get the ring off you should be able to pull these hoses off now be careful with fire flame smoking anything here you've got gas everywhere now so uh, there you go now it's a it's a pain in the ass just work this until you get it out and then realize the bottom of the fuel pump still has gas in it, so you're gonna have to do something with that. I don't. There's the old fuel pump. Here's my new one. Uh, there's a million different fuel pumps out there. Uh, you get what you pay for. Ha <laughs> ha. This is a pain in the ass job. This, uh, and I can s see why the mechanics quoted me like probably I think it was over like a thousand bucks to do it plus the part. Um, I don't think it's a thousand dollars worth of work, but whatever. I'm doing it, saving me a thousand dollars at least, I guess, plus the part. So uh, all you do is put it back in here. Be careful, try to not knock any of that dirt in there. Mine, you can see there's some dirt on the edges there. Um, but I'm not going to vacuum it out because it's wide open with gas now. And it's just uh, make sure you orient the pump the same way it was oriented when you took it out. One thing that you might notice when putting your fuel pump in is that you're, you'll say, oh my gosh, this fuel pump's way too tall. It actually isn't. It's on springs, and it just fits down like that. So You just need to push those, that spring tension down. Make sure that this part of the metal flange goes between the two slots here, and then you'll put that uh, locking ring back on top of it. I have that lock ring on top now, so I'm just going to take my wooden piece here and just tap it back into place. Alright, the uh, I got the locking ring on here. There's no more space between here. Let me tell you, uh, if you have a brass punch, it's going to be way easier than using wood. This, uh, this thing goes on pretty tough. 
Next, go ahead and hook up hook up your hoses here. Alarm's going off. Time to go pick up the kids from school. And then make sure to reattach your clips into these little doohickeys. Go ahead and put your clips back in here, your little retainer clips. They're much easier going in than they are coming out. Uh, I'm going to wait till I get this uh, positioned under the car with the jack under it, and then I'll hook these two up, and then I'll jack it up. Just because I don't want to accidentally drop it and maybe um, put too much stress on the, the wires, even though there is enough slack to get it to the ground without uh, pulling the wires out. Uh, basically, everything else is... Um, just put it back together it should be a lot easier if there's anything that's really hard when I put it back together I'll record that as well and tell you how I did it alright another garage tip here I use three jacks as it made it way easier to balance it um, three jacks with some wood say so, three jacks try it out I told you yesterday I had broken a couple clips and I decided since this is a fuel line even though it looked like when I put the clips in that uh, it was still holding it in I decided I would go buy some so I waited a day so that I could make a run to the auto store and they're pretty cheap though for all of these it was probably like three bucks so I would recommend just getting the clips since lines on the uh, fuel injected vehicles are um, under high pressure I have my two clips connected at the front of the uh, vehicle, one right there at the tank, that little white one you see, and then the one hard to show one I showed you guys earlier in the video, uh, which is right above the transfer case somewhere. I've also connected all the connections at the back of the the vehicle here. Um, the, I think there was three that I disconnected back here, and then also the fuel filler hose right there is connected. Uh, the two electrical connections on the top of the tank I had to connect before I lifted the tank up. Uh, those are right on top of the fuel pump, plus there's also two hose connections on there. So make sure all those connections are made. And this is on the 2007 Trailblazer. I noticed on some of the other ones they had some different uh, electrical connections that this one didn't have. So thankfully mine is a little simpler, I guess. We go ahead and put our relay back in the fuel pump here, uh, and then we'll try to start the vehicle. It might take a little bit. Maybe prime the pump a few times by turning the ignition key towards the on position and then back off several times. Okay, I'm I'm going to go ahead and clear my codes here, and then we'll start try to get the vehicle started and see if they come back or not. All right, they're all gone. I got the truck started, started right away with a new fuel pump, and what's awesome here is my gas gauge looks like it's working. We tried to run it down to uh, only having several gallons in there, and looks like we're at a quarter tank. So, check engine light hasn't come on. Uh, if it does come on, I'll update you and see what the problem was. One thing you're going to want to do is... One thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and uh, maybe run the vehicle outside in your driveway for a little bit. Make sure uh, there are no drips or anything coming from your fuel tank. Make sure all your lines and everything were put on correctly and you should be good to go.